All right, we are seeing a halt in the rally that started 2023 with the S&P 500 down this week. And now we're going to take a dive into what uh, happened during the worst trading day of the year. And let me just pull up the Wi-Fi interactive for a second. And I'm going to pull up a couple charts to show what has happened this week. These are Thursday's closes, but here's a four day chart of the Dow. And uh, here's that big down day on Tuesday, only down 1.6% for the week, but camping up in the lower end of its range. The Nasdaq took the bigger hit. It's down two. 2.24% as you can see for these four days so far. Uh, but I think it was really instructive to see what happened in the bond market. Now here is the entire US yield curve from all the way at the short end from a few months to one year, all the way to 20, 30 years at the long end. And that light blue line, the cyan line is today, actually this morning before the CPI or before the uh, inflation report. And then one week ago, and you can see we have been shifting higher all along, but especially in the belly of the curve here. So lots of action in the bond market kind of wagging equities. And I'll just show you real quick what happened with uh, equities. I got a couple heat maps here to show you, especially in the sector action. This is going to be very negative. All 11 sectors in the S&P 500 down, but check out consumer discretionary. That's down 5%, energy down 4%, communication services for and tech almost right there, 3.8% as well. So the mega caps really giving back a lot of the gains that they had been the leaders uh, early in this year. Um, and no more this week. So we'll have to see if the trends resume, Julie. Yeah, it's not just this week. You know, I was taking a longer look uh, back also at the upsurge that we saw in stocks. Really, October 12th was the bottom, the right. most recently bottom in the S&P 500. And then it sort of had a run through February 2nd. And then February 2nd, it peaked and stalled out. So what were the groups that led in that upsurge that we saw? If you take a look at some of the groups here, it's kind of a mixed bag. Materials was the best performing group for that period of time of 24%, followed by real estate. Like, so they don't really, there's not a common theme there. And then communication services. So you have an economically sensitive group, you have an interest rate sensitive group, and you have a growth group. So yeah. like, there wasn't really a lot of rhyme or reason in that upsurge. Then, since then, since February 2nd, in terms of the pullback that we've seen, uh, the worst group has been communication services, followed by real estate and consumer discretionary. So you've basically seen kind of a flipping of some of the groups that were leading that surge since February 2nd. Uh, a lot of the money, as you pointed out, has also been going into the bond market. And that was emphasized as well uh, in a note today out from the team over at Bank of America. They're looking at bond inflows last week of $4.9 billion. And we've seen the longest eight-week inflow streak going back to November of 2021. So a lot of the money that has been coming out of stocks in the past few weeks is going into bonds going. with rising rates, which means those bonds are losing money. Interesting to think about. It isn't, but well, losing money on the price basis. Yes. But if you look at the total return on the bonds because the yields are rising. I get, I get where you're coming from. I'm coming from a short-term trader point of uh, view. I'm coming from a long-term investor point uh, of view. That's why we. rock and roll you are. That's why, that's why it works well. <laughs> a little peanut butter and chocolate uh, situation here, I guess. Here, and here's another look at wh what I was describing here, what laid the way down uh, since February 2nd in some of these groups and the action that we have seen. Uh, overall, that 4% slide. Yeah, I guess the materials being down, not a surprise because the dollar has been rising. Those two are inversely re uh, proportional. Real estate, really an interest rate story, that's not going to do as well. But uh, so the, I guess the down moves kind of make sense. It was just the rally in January, which bucked the trend from last year, which is a little bit of a head scratcher. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, now we're back to the to where we were before. It was a head scratcher. We've gotten a lot of different explanations for what was happening there, including tax loss selling in December, yeah. then bounce back, and we'll 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 continue. We'll to let the dust settle and reassess yes. on Monday. Yes, I'm sure that we will.